Hey, what's up everybody? It's Austin and today we're gonna be working on this Ranger a little bit more and it's another little story, but we'll be working on stuff today as well. <laughs> Let's jump into it. So I would like to apologize for the wind before we get too far into this video. I might have to cut it up and clip it and everything like that. But uh, this truck, this Ford Ranger, the many problem Ford Ranger has many more problems for me to solve. One of them, it really concerned me. I thought we had another bonehead gasket. And, you know, at when I first thought I had the blown head gasket, I wasn't I was, I was disappointed, but at the same time, I was like, you know, it might just be a Ford. Now, some of you might laugh at that. Some of you might be like, no, we, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's okay. You know, it's okay to have a little bit of fun when talking crap about different manufacturers. We all hear it. You, you see it online. So the issue was, is everything was filled up properly. Um, radiator was filled and we had the expansion tank filled up halfway and it was running as you guys saw at the end of the last or the yeah the last video we uh we figured out why it wasn't running properly and it just fixed itself again the only thing we did to get that running was clean off the throttle body and the air bypass solenoid didn't do anything else and then we watched the, watched the rest of the truck or the the back half of the truck and now it's back over here now i did take it for a little bit of a drive and Got about eh, two miles down the road and was on my way back and started to see it overheat. I was like, okay, turn it off. So when I turned the truck off, I came out of the truck, opened up the hood and found the overflow tank, the expansion tank, completely full. And there's a little relief hole right here. And uh, it was squirting out. So uh, the whole overflow tank was, was filled. My thinking right then and there was head gasket. Because in my experience, a blown head gasket will pump um, combustion gases into the coolant system and, you know, coolant will get pushed out and more and more issues. So let me jump into the truck real quick so I don't have as much wind noise and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. And so I thought it was a blown head gasket and thankfully I'm able to say it was not a blown head gasket. Uh, we did check two things. Uh, we did check the leak down, and we did do a compression check just to see if there was any, uh, you know, issue with the head gasket. Everything was strong there, but we still had the issue. So if you come across somebody that's asking about, hey, my Ford Ranger is overheating or it's pushing all the coolant into the expansion tank, tell them to simply look at the thermostat. You know... I didn't think it was a thermostat. I thought it was another blown head gasket. And to be honest with you, I was about to say, well, time to put it up for sale. We're not going to clean it. And it's just going to go like it is. Come to find out, I took apart the uh, thermostat that was in the truck. Um, I wouldn't recommend that at all. I would just recommend switching it out. But I wanted to test it just to double check to make sure it wasn't a head gasket. So it was the thermostat. I took the thermostat apart, put it back in the thermostat housing, and it had no issues. What it was doing is with the bad thermostat in there, it would pressurize the system and push all the coolant out the expansion tank. And it was it would only do that after about maybe 20 minutes of idling or the same equivalent in running time, so driving up and down the roads. So after about 20 minutes, uh, yeah, it just pushes all the coolant out of the, uh, the coolant system and into the overflow. But now I do have a new uh, thermostat in my car. We're going to get that switched out and we're going to be doing that right now. It'll be a little bit of a, like a how-to for you Ranger people out there and your 40 V6 Mustang people out there. Because the thermostat housings are the exact same for both of those engines. And I believe on some of the Explorers, they were similar too. So the couple things you have to do to get down to this thermostat housing, it's really, really not that hard. And you do not have to take the intake off. 
All you have to do, take the clippies out of both of this, the air box, unclip the electrical connectors for the um, throttle position and the mass airflow, take this off, unbolt the throttle body, take it away from the cables, and then right down in here, let me bring you guys down there real quick, there is the thermostat housing. Now there's a bolt here, there's one back here, and then there's that one up front right there. With the throttle body off and all of this uh, intake stuff off, it's super easy to um, get the thermostat housing apart. And then it's just quick and easy. Now I'll do a quick time lapse so you can see what the process of that is. It won't be super sped up, so you can kind of follow along. Now you might want to take off this hose clamp because it's super close to the intake. Um, that's something you can do. It doesn't have to happen, but it's definitely recommended. So let's go ahead and get that done, and I'll see you at the end. So the only thing we have to do to get the thermostat out is, well, first get your tools. You're going to need a 10 and an 8. I would go with the shallow sockets, get a ratchet as well as a wrench on the 10 mil, and power tools help every now and then, so let's go ahead and get these knocked out. Again, super easy to get this taken off. It's the two clips, the electrical connector, and then I believe that that is the 8. We have the two 10 millimeter on the thermostat housing, and the four eight millimeter bolts on the throttle body. So let's go ahead and start getting this broken down and let's go ahead and switch out that thermostat. So we got the thermostat out. Again, this was more of just like a bypass one that I made. I cut my old thermostat apart to double check to make sure it wasn't that head gasket. So I have a new thermostat and a new radiator cap just because uh, we noticed this one was letting a little bit of coolant go by. Um, even when it wasn't running, you could squeeze this upper radiator hose and it was pushing water into the overflow tank. So I wanna replace that too. So we'll go ahead and get that thermostat in, get everything buttoned back up. But again, it's super easy. The hose clamp up here for the intake, we had the four bolts here, three bolts on the thermostat housing, and the hose clamp that hold this upper radiator hose on.
And just like that, everything is back together. Everything's tightened up with the exception of this one hose clamp. There we go. Now everything is done. All we got to do is throw some extra coolant in it and then we should be good to go. I'll be filling it from this heater core hose because it's a little bit higher than the radiator, but that's all right. That's what a lot of people say on the forums to do is fill it up by the heater core hose because a little bit nicer for it. A few less bubbles. So let's go ahead and replace the uh, radiator cap as well. And then we should be good to fill it up. Alrighty, so now that we got all of that done, again, sorry about that wind noise, but we got coolant in here. We will have to burp it again here in the future just because this is such an awkward upper radiator hose. We did get some coolant shoved in up here from the uh, heater core hose and we were topped off on the radiator, so that is great. So the only thing that has to be done now is burping the system and then we should have, shouldn't have any more issues. And... That's what I'm hoping for is no more issues. So that's going to be the end of the video today. I'm back in the truck because of the wind noise. But let me know what you all think. Did you know that a uh, thermostat could cause coolant to be shoved back through a uh, an overflow tank? I honestly thought it was another head gasket. I'm thankful that it wasn't, but now that I know, and if you know anybody that's having issues with coolant being shoved back into the overflow tank, Tell them to look at their thermostat. Even if it's brand new, tell them to look at the thermostat because that might be the issue. So I will say thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.